Hello Commanders, welcome back to another Elite Dangerous video with Commander Shinokuma. Today I'm going to run through the newly released details for the Beyond Chapter 3 update and offer my opinions on what I think looks really good, what I think looks a bit meh, and what I think looks a bit rubbish. First things first, release date, Tuesday the 28th of August, so this coming Tuesday, depending on when you're watching this video. And they have said they don't expect the downtime to be the 9 hours for the Chapter 2 update, although they haven't said exactly how long. I'm predicting probably between 3 to 4 hours, so they'll probably take the servers offline somewhere between 10am and um, midday um, GMT. And I expect them to be back online mid-afternoon about 3 o'clock. I'll have the update file downloaded in advance, so as soon as the servers come back online, we'll fly out into the galaxy and see what we can find in the new changes. So on with the changes. Now the first thing to note is that there is only one new main ship, not two. So there is the Alliance Crusader, and as yet the Crate Phantom appears to be just that, a phantom. Although FDev do have previous history in um, keeping ships under wraps that we might still see it yet. We don't know. The Crusader itself is a midpoint between the Chieftain and the Challenger, with the main difference being the addition of the Fighter Bay. There are no announcements as to whether or not they've changed the weapon layout or the internal slots. Now, speaking of fighters, of course, the main showpiece of Chapter 3 are these three new Guardian fighters. I say Guardian Fighters, they're actually human hybrid Guardian Fighters. According to their descriptions, they've got huge amounts of shields, but they're very, very delicate once those shields have gone, and they won't last very long on hull alone. Now the Fighters come in three different varieties, the Trident, the Lance, and the Javelin. The Trident, having the Plasma Auto Cannon, I can see that being very useful. The Lance having the Gauss Cannon, that's going to be spectacular. And the Javelin, look at the Shard Launcher, ah, don't really think anyone's going to use that. I don't think that's going to be good as an NPC fighter. I have of course seen human controlled ships with the Shard Launcher absolutely devastate Thargoids, but that's when they had a loadout of three controlled by a human. I don't think one on an NPC fighter is going to have much effect. So how are we going to get these new fighters? The patch notes indicate that Guardian Beacons will direct us to new mystery places where the technology will be available. Now I personally think that will be blueprints and then you'll do the usual run to the Guardian sites and collect up various bits and bobs of um, cargo to make them. Now in terms of blueprints, if like myself you were lucky enough to play Chapter 1 within the first few days, you would have accidentally picked up a load of Guardian Vessel Blueprints. I personally have 33, so I'm kind of hoping that I might get an early jump on the fighters, but I'm still going to go out to the beacons because it is new content and I do want to investigate what FDev have come up with. In addition to the new fighters, also new surface wing missions have been introduced. No details on exactly what those are, however they're likely to be upscaled versions of skimmer missions, perhaps destroying power plant missions, and maybe even scan beacon missions. I'm not entirely sure how that will work. I do think you will be able to complete them solo, even though they're wing missions, so the payouts might be a little bit higher, although the missions will take a bit longer. In addition to surface wing missions, engineers are finally coming to Colonia. So for those that don't know what Colonia is, it's a area of human populated um, space well outside of the bubble, about 22,000 light years, and those guys at the moment don't have any engineers. So they are bringing some, however there is a catch, you will still have to come back to the bubble and you will still have to interact with various engineers before you can even get an invite to the Colonia engineers. Not only that, you won't be able to upgrade to Grade 5 immediately like you can in the bubble. Um, there will be various community goals which will increase the rank in which engineers can um, upgrade your modules. So again, it looks like they're trying to create content and team spirit around it, as opposed to just saying, here's some engineers, crack on, there you go. We've also got some new weapons as well. So we've got large versions of Dumbfire, Seeker and Torpedoes. 
Um, these are in response to the surface missions um, in a wing. I don't think they're going to be any more powerful than their regular small and medium counterparts, only stock much, much more ammo. In addition to that, and these are less less exciting, are the Guardian weapons, but in small variants, and that's the Gauss Cannon, the Shard Cannon, and the Plasma Launcher. And that's both fixed and turreted variants. Probably should point out that the turreted aren't turrets in the conventional sense. They do not automatically tra um, track. They do not automatically fire. Simply means they can be used in multi-crew. And last but not least, we've got a, um, a new version of the shot cannon from the Human Tech Broker, again, in fixed, gimbaled and turreted. So that brings to a close my um, breakdown of the new Chapter 3 content. Now, please remember, every single time FDEV have launched a new update, there have been... Um, special missions, shall we call them, where you can earn significantly more credits than they intended. Um, I've seen them go up as high as 2 billion, and I'm half expecting there to be some um, issues with the new surface wing missions where you can potentially earn a significant amount of credits if you're quick enough. They only ever last 24 hours, 48 max, before they get fixed or nerfed back into the ground. So stay tuned, as you know, um, one of the things from my channel is I'm a specialist money grind hunter. Um, so I will be streaming as soon as the update goes live. So if I find it, you'll see it and you can take advantage as soon as you can. And last but not least, I've got myself some fancy new streaming software. Um, I've invested in an Elgato game capture device so I can now start streaming directly from my PC rather than having to rely on the built-in and somewhat limited software within the PS4 so I can make other things appear on screen and show you guys some more details as I go along so you can see a little bit more um, about what I'm doing. Okay so um, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn notifications on if you want to see me streaming live and take advantage of those um, potential high paying missions. But until then I'll see you around.